Adrenal Insufficiency, Real Stories, Real People, presented by the My Story with Addison's support group, www.mswad.info, and on Facebook. Hi, my name is Tana. I'm from Banning, California. It was a Sunday night like any other Sunday night, but I started feeling flu-like symptoms coming on. The rest of my family had the stomach bug the week prior. Throughout the evening, the symptoms became more severe. My mom found me in the restroom in a fetal position, crying. She woke up my husband, and he drove me to the emergency room, where they initially thought I had gallstones. The first CT showed stones, but no inflammation. They admitted me into the hospital and started me on dialatin every three hours for the pain. The doctors couldn't figure out the source of the pain. They did an upper GI, nothing. Still thought gallstones and was going to proceed with surgery. The surgeon ran another CT the night before surgery. That morning, my family was there and was told the surgery was canceled. The surgeon came in and told my family he had discovered between the first scan and the second scan my right adrenal gland hemorrhaged. The doctors consulted an outside endocrinologist with results. The endo suggested running an ACTH test. I had zero cortisol production. They started me on hydrocortisone and by the end of that day I was coherent and in minimal pain. I have primary Addison's disease. My diagnosis came on the 50th anniversary of John F. Kennedy's assassination, November 22, 2013. Ironic because President Kennedy was an Addison's disease patient, too. It has been a struggle getting the right doses of corticosteroids, and finally, after seven months, the combo of hydrocortisone and prednisone and then being placed on fludrocortisone has made a vast improvement where I almost, I say almost, function as I did prior to my diagnosis. My current meds are hydrocortisone, prednisone, fludrocortisone, Ativan, and Celexa to help me with steroid side effects. I also have a Solucortef injection in case of adrenal crisis. My motto is, live for today, because tomorrow is never promised. I was diagnosed with Hashimoto's in March 2012, primary adrenal insufficiency, or Addison's disease, March 2013, premature ovarian failure, November 2013, vitamin B12 deficiency, and vitamin D deficiency in February 2014. Osteopenia, March 2014, and high blood pressure in February 2014. Adrenal insufficiency has changed my life completely. I've had to change and adapt everything and how I do things. Even the smallest task like taking a shower, I can no longer stand to take showers. Something about the water hitting me with my eyes closed makes me dizzy and I fall down. I am 27 and I have to have a shower chair. I can't stand or walk more than a few minutes at a time without getting dizzy, experiencing shortness of breath, and shooting pains up my legs. My bones feel like they are on fire. I had a high-grade stress fracture of my tibia March 2014, and it still has not healed properly a year later. My personality has changed as I cannot handle sudden plan changes. My brain just shuts down and I panic. Taking steroids are the reason I'm able to still live, but because of them, I have gained close to 150 pounds since diagnosis. It is hard when you've always been thin and now you're overweight. I'm unable to work, so we're living with my in-laws. I'm grateful they've allowed us to live with them, but I'm ready for my own place. Even though I know they are not judging me, I often feel judged because I cannot do a lot. I love the statement Nicole Curtis says on Rehab Addict. Whatever you believe you can do, you can do. Now I have recently learned that my limitations are not in my head like I always thought. I am on 25 milligrams hydrocortisone a day and 0.1 milligram Fluorinef 
as well as about 10 other medications and vitamins, close to 25 pills a day. My name is Mandy. I'm 32 years old and from Northeast Oklahoma. At the age of five, I developed an anaphylactic peanut allergy and have struggled with health issues since. I am now classified as a brittle steroid-dependent asthmatic. In September of 2013, I ended up in the ER with yet another asthma attack, but this one was different than the ones in the past. I was passing out, throwing up, had the worst muscle cramps throughout my body, and didn't respond well to the normal protocol. I was later released but struggled with my normal daily routine. One week later, after tons of testing, I was called and told to get to my doctor as soon as possible that I was on the verge of an adrenal crisis and had dangerously low levels. In the past two years, we've struggled to find the right dose of meds for me through multiple ER visits and lots of education for myself and my family. Two weeks after my first crisis, I decided to take a leave from the education field but have yet to return, as my asthma is also a daily struggle for me. I continue to have days where I just can't function due to the adrenal insufficiency. I continue to remind myself that the good days outweigh the bad and that we will soon have better medication and education for all of us. I recently switched from Cortef back to prednisone after multiple emergency room visits within two months. My body just wasn't absorbing the Cortef well enough. I've been on the search for two years for an endocrinologist that I felt was a great fit for my team. And in March of 2015, after searching for two years, I finally found one. Hi, my name is Lynn. I'm 49 years old and I live in Mansfield, Georgia. I'm a wife, a mother of two, and a grandmother of two beautiful granddaughters. In February of 2009, I was diagnosed with Addison's disease. I was very sick, as I was also newly diagnosed with Graves' disease in July 2008. Now, both Graves and Addison's diseases are known to run together. With Addison's, my skin was very tan. I had nausea, vomiting, appetite loss and weight loss, and low blood pressure. I would stay dehydrated all the time. Having adrenal insufficiency, we stay dehydrated and need fluids due to the inability to balance water and retain sodium. I have also been diagnosed with epilepsy, supraventricular tachycardia, bradycardia, hypoparathyroidism, hypocalcemia, chronic back, muscle, and joint pain, and restless leg syndrome. I am steroid dependent and take 60 milligrams of hydrocortisone one milligram of Florinef, one in the morning and one in the evening. I also have an emergency injection kit of 100 milligrams of Solucortef. This has to be taken when we are stressed, sick or in a car accident or have another type of injury. Just a common cold will put me in the hospital. I have a wonderful support team at home, my husband John, my son John Jr. and my daughter Scarlett. My strength comes from God. My life has changed so much, not able to be who I want to be. I was once very active. I was starting my own in-home child care. I was a full-time mother and wife, and I would take my elderly neighbor to the doctor when she needed to go. I loved the fast pace in my life. After becoming so sick, I wasn't able to do anything at all. It had changed my whole way of life. Now I don't have the ability to get out of bed or just walk across the room. I will sometimes go for days and feel great, and then at any minute I will get sick, and sometimes all I do is sleep, and then there are times when I will go for several days and can't sleep at all. My life and the lives of my Addison sisters and brothers will be forever changing. We depend on each other for just the right words to say. We are always telling our stories to each other, and we share everything together as a family. My hopes and dreams are that from this wonderful video that more can be made. Our now untold stories need to be heard too. Our medical personnel, 
Hospitals and doctors need more education on Addison's disease, adrenal insufficiency, and the consequences of not knowing the signs and how to treat it in an emergency. There needs to be more awareness brought to this very rare disease. So please, help us in raising awareness.